Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabi ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habit if Allah question was asked assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I would like to get some advice from you about studying fiqh my situation is as follows when I started practicing at the age of 14 I'm almost 18 now the only source for knowledge I would use is websites like Islamic Q and uh, Islam Q and A dot info because I heard from trustworthy people that this is a reliable website at that time I didn't know that there is something like studying thick in a systemic way where someone studies a metan meaning a text from cover to cover with a teacher and that this is something that should be done so my fic was basically no more than a sporadic fatwa that I read from scholars like uh, Sheikh bin Uthaymin uh, bin ba, Sheikh bin Baz. That means that the opinions I adopted in acts of worship, for example, often weren't confined to a particular madhab. And sometimes I would read about many different opinions with different proofs and evidences. And as a layman, I had difficulties choosing which one to follow. Now I realize why everyone is saying that the layman shouldn't give, shouldn't dive into ikhtilaf in the beginning. I can read Arabic, but I can't speak Arabic in the masajid in my locality. A German city do uh, do not follow a particular madhab. Rather, they incline to the views of Sheikh Al Albani, rahimahullah taala. But they don't give any classes. I do know about some online resources, like, for example, your channel or Hadith Disciple or Ask Huda or Knowledge College from the brothers in the UK, like Ustad Abu Taymiyyah and others. To conclude, I would love to get some advice on how to empty my cup, as Mufti Ibn Munir would say. In order to study and what to do in the situation, may Allah Azza wa Jal bless you, keep you firm upon Islam, and enter you into Jannah. Amin wa iyakum. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, as you mentioned and realize, come to realize that fiqh, you you need to study fiqh and you need to go through metun, you need to go through text, um, and I would. And definitely you need uh, uh, to study with a student of knowledge or a scholar because even if you were to read simple books, uh, you know, books that are broken down like Imam Fozan's, which is in English and, and free, uh, his Malakh his Fiqiyah, uh, the summarized uh, version of Fiqh or summarized Fiqh or something like this, uh, that this is a fantastic book, but you need background to actually to make practice tatbiq of a lot of those things you know you, you need a teacher and especially when it comes to getting more in depth in many of the abwab so it's very important to definitely go through metun with scholars so we realize that and as you said there's no you don't really have classes there and this brings up a very important point, and this is in relation to study in our deen in general, because not just in fiqh, but many people they have in the West have built their religion from uh, cutting and pasting from fatawa, and even even in issues of aqidah and and methodology that people are not grounded because they don't study the text, they don't sit in durus. You know, they don't benefit from lectures and stuff like this. So they've just depended upon websites that just gave them a, a statement and they took that statement. And then the worst part about it, it's not the, bad that they took those statements because maybe they're trustworthy websites that have good statements and good uh, translations from the ulama and what have you. But it's their tatbiq. And I'll give you one example. This is related to minhajiyah, if you will, method, methodological. And this was a situation, this was a time one of our scholars was defending a scholar. Uh, this was some ikhtilaf, uh, somewhat between this, uh, some Salafi scholars. And some of the scholars were defending a person who turned out to be a mubtadiya later, who they acknowledged and refuted later. But some of the statements that they were saying and were being translated to the people, things like whoever speaks about this guy, then know that he is this. And I remember when I returned back to America, a brother, may Allah forgive us in him and bless us in him. He's grown. We've all grown. But he mentioned to me, he said, Sheikh so-and-so, who is an alam? Is an alam. Alam of sunnah. He mentioned, he said, Sheikh so-and-so, he spoke ill about this my, this uh, other Sheikh who 
Alhamdulillah, Allah protected me from his harm, and I saw that early, that, you know, he was kind of extreme. And as they call, classify him now, some of the scholars say he's Hadadiyya. Anyway, he's Hadadi. Anyhow, so the people were translating and, and putting all this information out there, defending this guy, when this imam spoke up against him, and even refuted some other scholars of the Sunnah, and the and Ahl Sunnah refutes Babahum Baba. They refute each other, it's no problem. When someone makes a mistake or they differ on something and one believes he's right and the other believes he's right, it's it's you know, refutations are not a problem. It's when people go to the extent of making tibdi if they're making tibdi without the right to do so, without you know the conditions for doing so. So, anyhow, uh, this brother in America, so then he's speaking really without knowledge because of what he learned from those cut and paste websites that he took this statement of Sheikh so and so, who's a Sheikh I studied with, and Imam so and so, who's a Sheikh I also studied with. I knew their levels, and when just because he, the Sheikh, said this, whoever speaks about so and so, you know, this is a general statement, it's the opinion of the Sheikh. The bottom line is, it's the opinion, opinion of the Sheikh, it's his ijtihad, if you will. So it's not a nas, it's not from kitab, wala sunnah. It's his, uh, you know, his looking at kitab and sunnah and his uh, understanding and his tatbiq of kitab wa sunnah regarding this issue or regarding this individual. So he was praising this other scholar and this brother who wasn't really even a student of knowledge and said, Sheikh Sono, who's an alam, who's a jebel, a mountain, uh, you know, he, he's like this. Because Sheikh so and so said, and I said, Subhanallah, where is this? Sheikh so and so, from my recollection, is even a student of that alam you just criticized. So, anyhow, the point being, a habit of is be careful of cut and paste. And that this goes with fatawa, that we don't, you can't build your religion on fatawa. Plain, plain and simple, you can't just, you know, all the, because fatawa are dealing with specific messiah. That means so much in between those messiah you're missing. So much, and this is what the beauty and, and the beauty and the importance of seeking knowledge is that seeking knowledge should give you ta'seel. And when it comes to different issues, it should give you ta'seel and masail. That it should give you uh, ta'seel, meaning it comes from what? It comes from the word asl, from, you know, foundation. So ta'seel, what we mean is ta'seel that you have a, a foundation. When you study in a university or you study in an institute or you study with ulama or you study in marakas al sunnah or whatever, even with tulab al-ilm and you finish matun, this gives you a familiarity with uh, the Messiah of Fiqh. You know, and if you finish a metan, you're going to be familiar with, all, you know, at least touched on all the basic uh, issues of Fiqh. You've been through a metan. Whereas if you cut and paste, you're only going to deal with a few issues that you talked upon based on fatawa. Not even based on ta'seel, you know, gaining the, or the, the, the foundation in those issues. So it's very important to go through Matun. Now, as you mentioned, going through those YouTube channels, uh, that's fantastic. And I know Hadith Disciple, I know he's, I think he's finished some books and, 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 and uh, you know, in Baluga Maram and things like this. So you can gain a lot of benefit from those. And I know the brothers in, uh, in Philly, uh, that have the uh, Muslim Family Center. They're doing some durus right now, mashallah, starting in fiqh, in, in Tahara, in the other abwab. So they're doing stuff. Sheikh Tahir and, and, uh, and all the brothers, uh, Sheikh Ali Davis, Abu Sheikh. Sajid, and, and others. So they're doing some real positive, and, 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 and Hanif. Uh, so they're doing some good work, and I, I would advise to, to benefit from there. So, but you need, and, and what uh, the brothers are doing in the UK as well. And I know there's many others that I've missed that are there in Philly, that are there in Jersey, that are all around the world, but those are the ones that I'm more familiar with. So I would say to do whatever it takes to finish some matun uh, in fiqh, because you need to get that ta'seel, you need to get the, that, that foundation, so that way you're familiar with the abwab, and that helps you build. Then you even know, for example, an issue just came up, I looked. I wouldn't know where to even look if I hadn't studied some fiqh. Yeah, I wouldn't even know which bab, you know, how, how can I find this? I'm looking at the fatwa of Sheikh so-and-so, Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh bin Uthameen, Sheikh Jibreen, Sheikh whoever, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masan al-Abad, uh, Imam Fozan, whoever. You know, I'm looking at 
what they're saying and if you have tatsil you can understand you'll understand what they're saying you're not even going to really understand some of the fatawa even if they're translated sometimes if you don't have some ta you know some some uh, 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 foundation so it's very important to study uh, fiqh study some matun and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan and the last thing I hope in the future and this is one of the reasons why I have uh, started to uh, you know the project that I, I'm trying to do the institute that I'm trying to work on but it is a long time in the works and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with tawfiq wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad